so now we should have a handout around um, starting the conversation um, and it includes uh, some um, potential um, script messages. Your, the, the, the messages and the language that you're going to use of course is going to vary according to the situation in which you find yourself. But I'm conscious that we have in the room many people who can influence what's happening in practice and um, so I'm going to focus my comments to a certain extent on what we would like to see happen in general practices and for those that are involved with um, uh, smoke-free liaison positions, with PHO positions and with stop smoking services, this is the kind of information that would be great for you to share with your GP and um, practice nurse colleagues. Um, um, my experience in learning not necessarily new things, but in, but in perhaps revisiting um, uh, new items in general practice, is that it can be very helpful just to learn off sometimes a little question to, to say or a little way of saying things. Um, and it just it stops you getting caught out. And often when, you, when you've heard somebody else say it, you can say, oh, I could do that or I could do that better. <laughs> Um, and so Rosie and I are going to do a couple of, uh, couple of role plays um, at the end of this presentation. So this is about starting the conversation and um, just share a little bit of uh, international evidence about uh, myths that we have. You will come across these myths still um, that some people will believe these things and so you can challenge them. This is evidence based answers here. So the first one is that um, myth, smokers do not like to be asked about their smoking behaviour. First of all, look at the, um, at the smoke free nurses videos, that will give you a completely different picture. Uh, fact, um, patients have a positive view of healthcare providers who inquire about their smoking status and believe the providers are not fulfilling their duty if they do not inquire. Um, that's definitely borne out in the smoke free nurses um, videos, uh, but that is um, part of this, this research that's um, reported in the Canadian Journal of Respiration. Um, second myth. Reducing stop smoking but not stopping lowers your risk of adverse outcomes. The recent lung health study from the United States showed no reduction in, in ischemic heart disease and all adverse outcomes for people who reduced but did not quit smoking. By contrast, quitting smoking entirely at any age significantly increases life expectancy. So we saw that on, on that graph originally. Quitting at any age is worthwhile. So there's virtually no point in life at which it's not actually worth stopping. And I have certainly had older patients who say, oh, it's too late for me now, John, you know, I'm, I'm, I've done all the damage. Actually, not true. Stopping even at that age uh, is worthwhile. <laughs> um, most smokers do not want to quit. Um, I'll show some New Zealand data in a minute, but approximately 60% of all smokers are at least thinking about or actually preparing to quit, and that is borne out with local information, as I'll show in a minute. Um, myth, a very brief discussion regarding smoking cessation is not effective. RCTs have shown that it's five times more effective than just providing advice. So a motivationally based discussion, and it doesn't need to be very long, and that's what we're going to role play in a minute, um, is, is a very powerful way of doing that. So we've got, there is evidence behind this approach. And, this, and it was that evidence that drove the whole development of the ABC approach. It wasn't just kind of dreamed up as a, as a good thing. There is evidence behind why we want a national target that says 90% of all smokers will be offered um, advice and help to support the quit process. Um, so um, this is a look at the number of um, uh, quit attempts made by smokers, and again, um, this information is all available in the uh, in the resource that, that is in the, on the on the online resource. Um, percentage of um, of responses. So, um, people who who in the last 12 months have not made a, a an effort to stop smoking. So these are one week quit efforts, um, less than 50 percent. So. About 55% of people are making at least one effort every year to stop smoking. And so that's part of the reason for um, the idea that we should be asking about smoking at every contact in the health service because you just might happen to get the person in that one week at which they come in. And if they're motivated in that one week, that's the week that you that you can get action and, um, and commit, commit them. But really interesting... 30% are making one attempt, but if you look at two or more attempts, this large group here, 20% of all smokers, are trying all the time to stop. You know? And so you, you, know, you really pick this up when you do your um, 
proactive phone calling, um, when, when you're on the phone talking to people, you know, it's, uh, if it's a population you haven't never phoned before, and there's not many now that, that would be like that, but when we first started, we were getting about 20% of people that were saying yes, they were interested in, in support to quit. Now there's a long way between that 20% being interested and actually getting to the end, we know that too. But that's, that's the proportion that we're getting that at any one time are, are interested in quitting. So that means that really one in five smokers that comes into the surgery, into my room, they're thinking about quitting. If I don't ask them, I've missed the opportunity. So that's a really um, key message to get out. So um, recruiting for smoking cessation, um, for us as clinical staff, obviously offering cessation support. We just go straight to support. Um, since we know that most people actually want to stop, we don't have to go through, are yeah, you interested in stopping and kind of where you're up to and stuff like that. We can just say, would you be interested in support to quit? Looking for clinical opportunities, there are lots. Um, um, so many um, clinical consultations are actually smoking related. Um, and some of them very obviously, you know, respiratory infections and things like that, it's very obvious that if that's in a smoker, you, you, so where does your smoking fit into these symptoms? But there's, there's quite, a lot of, quite a lot that would have an impact on smoking that may not be so obvious, and we just need to, to draw those in, you know. What do you, what do you think your smoking might be? Where does it fit into this problem that we're managing, you know? Expecting smokers to want to quit, as we've just said. Setting up quit plans, e.g. quit by dates, and we'll talk a little bit about that, and otherwise motivating for next time. So bottom line is, if someone's not interested, you can still motivate them for the, for the next time. People go away and think about it. They have one of those periods where they have a bit of a shift. Next time you come in, actually, I, I will talk to you about smoking next time. And even the most ardent, I, I mean, um, when we started doing proactive uh, phoning, um, you seldom get anybody negative. But, you know, you do. You, there's the odd person out there that's a bit... And had, had actually somebody ring up and complain um, that oh, the nurse had phoned them and what was I thinking asking them to do that. So I just talked through what, how important it was, that was fine. Um, three weeks later that person came in and asked if they could quit smoking. Um, so, you know, the shift there is, is just that person started thinking about it and actually they, they, they thought about it, you know, and I guess I, I do want to do that. So that person's now an ex-smoker and that was a great, that was a great thing. So, what kind of questions? Um, so, you've got somebody in the room who, um, and, and there's no clinical opportunity to get into smoking, how do, how do you introduce it? I just, just say something like, are you currently smoking? Have you been thinking about your smoking? Have you been thinking about quitting? Can I check in with you about smoking? Are you okay if I ask you a few questions about smoking? I think, um, you know, we often hear from GPs and nurses, um, you know, I, I don't want to badger people about their smoking. There's nothing badgering about this. This is just, this is a, you know, uh, open questions is the way to get into into this process and um, and just lead into uh, really what is in, uh, a very brief discussion. And um, as we'll show in the role plays, um, these are not long discussions. Um, so for the patient who responds, indicating a conversation will be welcome. And so that definitely, you know, you definitely, some of you are very surprised. You don't think this person's going to respond positively. They do. Um, so ha have you been thinking about quitting? Can you tell me about your quit experiences that you've had? What was the longest period you stopped smoking for? Can you tell me about how that went? So if you get a little bit of a buy-in, you get an edge there, you can, can open it out. You know, tell me about your experience. Get them to own it. Um, what worked, what didn't work, what might we have to do this time? It's all just a way of setting up so that you can say, boy, I've got a deal for you. You know, I've got a medication that can actually stop you wanting to smoke, it can, it can take your cravings away, we're going to get you some support and uh, you're going to be an ex-smoker um, very quickly. Um, so that's a very good way into the, so that's for the person who indicates um, that a conversation would be welcome. For the patient who indicates that they're probably not interested, two, two potential responses here. So they may indicate by um, by uh, politely showing from their body language that they don't want to go into that space, um, or sometimes they're just slightly more forthright than that. Um, no, I'm not interested, don't talk to me about that, or words uh, that they may well choose themselves that might be less polite. Um, so then I just then I say to them, well look, would you tell me what you enjoy about smoking? Um, so that's, as you appreciate, that's part of the motivational way of getting into, into smoking questions. Tell me what you enjoy about it. That, that surprises people. They don't expect a clinical person to say to them, what do you, actually, what do you like about it, you know? Um, and it's very interesting because actually most people struggle to find actually what they do enjoy. They mostly come up with just stress relief, that's about all they can usually come up with. And then you say, so, and what's not so good about your smoking? And actually that's when you've got a chance then to draw out all those things. That's about that dealing with that ambivalence and getting that balance of, of issues going on in their head. It just encourages that thinking and that, um, that uh, process um, by which they're going to maybe shift towards wanting to quit. Um, and then 
The other thing that you can say is, what does your partner, family member, other, other think about it? You know, it's just, it's just a, a, another sort of entry point. Who else might be thinking about your smoking? Has anybody else made some comments? It's a sort of a way in to provide a little bit of, um, of discomfort, you know? Um, the technical term we're, that we're after is called cognitive dissonance. That's where um, your mind says, I want to stay smoking, um, but, but your, your emotions say, I shouldn't be smoking, you know? And uh, you've got this dissonance and you want to shift on. Um, then the second set of option for a patient who indicating they're probably not interested, so we can do enjoy. Um, can we talk about alternatives to smoking? Um, have you had experience with vaping? So sometimes then, if you've if you've got this, especially if you know this is somebody that you're not going to get any other any other process, I say, can we talk about alternatives? Um, have you had any experience with vaping? Because a lot of people have had experience with vaping, so I don't want to say to them, you know, like um, I'm, you know, we've got this vape to quit protocol. It would be really helpful for you um, if they've already tried that. I, w I want them to buy, and I want them to be saying to me, well, actually, I want to I want to go down that track so that it's being driven by them rather than by me. Um, okay, is it okay if I send you some information about smoking, um, or can we catch up with smoking at your next visit? So, uh, in some way, I want to. Um, I want to move into a space where we're going to keep smoking on the agenda, and that's kind of like leading towards the development of a plan. We all agree that smoking is going to stay there. Um, so I'd like to just show you an example of that by um, sending you an example of what I might send out. So now, in th sometime in the next few minutes, on your phones you should get um, a text from me. I might just send you a couple. Um, so I don't, I don't, I'm not sure how long this takes to come through because this is coming from it. You got it already? Cool. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's going to get a lot of clicks, aren't we? Um, if I've got someone who's just who's not engaging with me, um, I want I want to leave them with something to think about because I know that prompting is so important. So I might say, can I just send you some information? So one of the ones I send out is around the um, information around um, what's in a cigarette. Another one is about a cost calculator, so you can work out um, how much you're smoking. And it's just, it doesn't really matter what you send out. It's the fact that I think it's important enough for you to have some information so that you will think of it. They're, they're prompts, so that the actual content is less important than the, than the process. So um, I have these set up on, on, a, on a little outbox. So for me, it's two keystrokes to send those out. And it's very, very simple um, and a, a very useful um, thing for us to be able to share. Um, I just want to give you, uh, so those are all, um, I think, really useful uh, lead-in things, open questions, but it's quite hard to learn new scripts, you know, like, unless you're an actor, it's quite hard learning lines. Um, so um, here's, here's my really simple way of doing this, and this actually works for smoking, it also works for all other health behaviours, alcohol, exercise, all that kind of stuff too, so this is, this is a generic um, John McMinniman's generic response to how to talk to people who don't want to do what you want them to do. Okay, <laughs> most of our patients, perhaps. Okay, um, it's called the you, them, me approach. So what you say is, um, tell me what you know about this. So in this situation, tell me what you know about the benefits of quitting. Tell me, do you have any concerns about smoking? So it's a question about you. I want you to give me some information. You get a zero answer from that. Does anyone else have concerns? So that's the them, partner, family, f uh, family member, friends. Does anyone else have concerns? It's just another way of getting around that. You know, it opens it up from from the side. No. So first they say no. I've, I know I'm happy smoking. I've got no concerns. No, no. Everybody in our house smokes, and we're all smoking away happily together at home. That's great. It's very unlikely actually. But uh, and then that's the me. Can I share with you why I'm concerned about your smoking? get permission, can I send you some information about smoking, and that's, that's when I send that out. So this is a really simple approach, um, you, them, me, it's all you've got to remember, you, them, me, and, and you can say, I want a question about you, I want a question about people that are important to you, no go there, then I'm going to ask from, from myself, can I, can I share you some information. The you is way more successful, if they own it at the beginning, you don't have to go into anyone else. The them is quite important because significant people in their life are very influential, you're, you're really using somebody else's authority and a it's a sort of transference thing, you're, you're using that to, to encourage the change. But in the end, you're falling back on your authority, but your authority is done in a very 
um, gentle, permissible way. So it's not I'm telling you you must do this, but is it okay if I give you some information about this? And, and that is a gentle way of getting in, but it puts a lot of authority behind that. So those are the... Um, uh, those are the things that we've sent out. Just, um, I, I mean, they're quite good ones. There's lots, there's lots of other ones. You can, you can hunt around and find anything. You can obviously, you just need to cut and paste the um, web link um, into into the um, outbox document or your texting program. So anything you think would be good to share with the patient, um, you just you bring it up in the room on the computer. Um, identify the web link. It doesn't matter what setting you're in. If you're in front of a person and you're showing them some resource, you just um, take the web link at the top, put it, and dump it into a text program and send it out. And then they've got it, then they click on it and they've got that one there, which is great. So uh, this, this, the, tobacco, the smoking one, is that the cost is actually really a very interesting one. This one you just go through the different things and it shows you all the different things that are in chemicals. Um, that's what it looks like, you've got that on your phones now. And the, um, in the, in the um, presentation um, uh, slides that you'll get, the, the links are there. So that's, um, that's how we go about uh, from, a, from a kind of opening up and starting what the plan is all about. Um, so Rosie, shall you and I just maybe, we'll demonstrate the you, then, me, I think would be the, would be the way to go. So, so hi Rosie, um, it's great uh, we've um, sorted out that little item that you came in with there. And, um, just like to um, just take a minute just to check in and really about um, about how you're th where you're thinking about smoking is at the moment. Um, it's funny you brought that up actually because um, you know little Tommy's two now, so I'm, I'm struggling a little bit um, with running around after him. Sure. Um, that's just causing me a bit of concern. And yeah. I, I don't feel like I'm being the best parent I can be because I, I just can't run after him without my. Ooh. <laughs> So it sounds like you're actually quite interested in the idea of thinking about stopping. Yeah, I yeah. think it now might be okay. time to try yeah. it. So what have you tried before? Oh, I've tried those patchy things, they don't work very well. Um, and that gum, oh, yeah, it just tastes like chewing a cigarette. Yeah. So did you try those um, just yourself or, or was somebody helping you? No, I just got them from the pharmacy. They're really yeah. expensive as well. Yeah. Well, fortunately now you can get them at much reduced cost. But um, so there's still the option of using those products because um, sometimes if you have somebody explain how to use them in a different way, you can get a lot, a lot more success with them. But we've also got some medication options that we can look at as well. So is it okay if we just spend a minute now talking about that and looking at what the options might be? Yeah. Okay. So that's a real easy one. I mean, you, get, you can see you're straight into that. I mean, that's a, that's not that uncommon to be able to get straight into that. But um, it's not the majority, but it's, it's lovely when it happens to a nice cooperative patient. <laughs> and they see Rosie being a bit less cooperative. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi Rosie. Um, hi. So, um, good that we've um, sorted out that and done that script for you. Um, just want to touch base about the smoking again. I know we talked about it last time when we said we'd um, just check in this time. Um, so, how's yeah, that going? Yeah, still smoking. Well, yeah. thanks. Okay. So, um, what you know, where, where are you thinking about your smoking and quitting at the moment? No, really. No, so no, not, not. I'm, I'm right with it. You're yeah. right with it. Yeah. So you're not really thinking about. Oh, it's not the time for you to be to be thinking no, about that. Um, I don't think so. No. Okay. Um, tell me, Rosie. Um, uh, how you know? How's your boyfriend thinking about about your smoking at the moment? What's 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 he thinking about? It? Um. Well, actually, he does complain that um, I cough a lot at night oh. and it keep, keeps him away. And, and he says that my breathing sounds terrible and that he freaks out that I'm going to stop breathing in my seat. But I just think he's being drama queen. Uh, so he's, <laughs> he's a bit concerned about you, is he? Yeah. 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 So do you think there's anything behind the, um, the things that he's concerned about? It sounds like you're having a little bit of coughing and maybe some things there that, that he's worried about. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I suppose maybe it's something we should start Yeah. So maybe it would be helpful if we just had a think about some information around smoking and um, might be you two could maybe have a talk about that. And, yeah, uh, I suppose it wouldn't harm to yeah, yeah. look into it again. Um, what might be good would be not just to get some information, but to give you some information about uh, where you can go to get help to quit. Um, we've got this uh, great um, stop smoking service here in town and um, that service would be able to help you um, and you've got Does that cost? 
No, no, it's no cost. And the good thing about it is that you've already got the support person um, right next to you who will be able to help you with that. So that might be something to think about. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you can see where that's leading. We can kind of tease our way around, around that one. Uh, now we're going to go for the real toughy one. That's um, uh, Rosie at, at, her, at her best. <laughs> <laughs> so hi, Rosie. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we had this discussion about smoking last time you were in, and, and I, I, I got the sense that you were not really very interested in stopping. But I just thought, just thought I'd touch base with you again about that. Um, so, yeah, I'm still completely not interested. I love it. Yeah, yeah. So you haven't shifted. Uh, no, love that. it. Absolutely yeah. love it. Yeah. And um, uh, any of your friends been, been thinking about stopping? I don't care what they do. It's their life, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So, um, anybody close to you concerned about, about this one? No, okay, it's not, not really any of their business. Not any of their business, no. Okay. So, you, so it sounds like you're, you're pretty much committed in that space, isn't it? Um, look, there's some things that, as your doctor, I'd be quite keen for you to know about smoking. I know we've touched on it before. Would you be okay if I just sent you a little bit of information just to think? There's just a, some stuff I'd like to um, put on your phone for you. Maybe just to go away and think about a couple of, uh, couple of interesting sites that just leave it there for you to think about, and um, and you can have a look at it. Yeah, yeah. If you want, might look at it. That'd be great, Rosie. Right? You'll, you'll get them on the phone just after you leave the reception. And like just after you're paid. Right. So thanks very much. So you, so you can see that's the you then. Everybody will have their own um, make their own ways of getting in. You've got to use your own language, obviously. But you can see that it um, doesn't matter what the conversation is, very quickly you can get some process in, in some way. Mm -hmm.